Yeah, hello guys, so in this video we're going to talk about fluid statics and so two main topics uh, for this video. The first one is uh, the pressure at a point and the second is the equation for pressure field. So let's get start talking about this one. Uh, for this one, um, okay, let me just place here an image that I need. I got it, uh, yep, from a book. Um, so basically you have a um, vessel, okay, it's a vessel with some fluid and you want to analyze what's the pressure of a specific element here, but you want to see if the angle uh, actually affects the, the, the pressure of this element. So if we go for Newton's second law, uh, let's just move this second yep so if we go for Newton's second law we know that the sum of force is going to be equal to mass times acceleration so in this case let's analyze just the y direction and the z direction is going to apply as well for the x direction so for the y direction we can tell that um, of course it's going to be the positive uh, axis, negative axis so in the positive axis we have um, so what's going to be the force? We know force is going to be equal to pressure over area, right? So, um, wait a second. So actually, uh, so this is going to be Newton. Uh, so pressure is going to be Newton per meter square. Uh, we need to multiply time, uh, yeah, pressure times area. So we need to do this uh, um, units analysis to, uh, to check the units. This actually makes sense. We know this is Newton, this is Newton per meter square, and this needs to be times meter square. And that way we get the Newtons equal to Newtons. So pressure times area, that's why we have here pressure in Y times the uh, differential area that is going to be this here, that is uh, differential element in S times differential element in Z, right? There is nothing else in the positive direction, but in the negative direction we're going to get minus the pressure in S times the uh, differential element in X uh, times the differential element in S times the sine of uh, theta, right? And this is going to be equal to the mass, which is going to be density, times volume, right? In the volume is going to be uh, the differential element in both in in in, ter in both in all directions, sorry, divided by two because if we uh, analyze this as a cube, it's going to be just uh, the x, the y, the z, but we have just half of it, so it's going to be divided by two times the acceleration in the y direction. If we do the same for um, the z direction, we're going to end up with, so this is what we get. So basically, it's going to be the positive, uh, this positive one going downwards, right? Which is uh, just um, pz um, dx dy, uh, which is going to be actually this one, sorry, going upwards because this is the positive one, negative one here down. So this one going upwards is this one. Then we have going downwards, do downwards, we have this one going downwards and we have as well the weight. And weight is just a uh, mass time gravity, right? Um, but uh, what is mass? It's a good question. Mass is density um, times differential element of volume times gravity and these two elements here are just uh, the specific weight we know a specific weight density times gravity and here we have the differential element of, um, of the volume and on the other side we have the acceleration in set density and differential element um, here so we can actually express uh, delta of y as uh, so we'll just pay attention to this right here, this triangle here, okay, here we have y, delta of y, so basically like uh, something like this, delta of y, 
delta of s and delta of z and here is uh, terra so we can tell that um, sine is going to be equal to opposite over hypotenuse then cosine is going to be um, adjacent over hypotenuse so cosine of theta over uh, sorry times ds and dz is going to be equal to sine of theta times ds after we plugged uh, this so instead of the y here uh, where is it uh, the y here we replace by this we are going to end up with um, so you you could actually do it. It's going to be a little bit time consuming. So due to some time here, I don't want to make this video really long. So um, basically, this is what we are going to end up with. And if we actually take the limit of dy going to zero and this is going to zero just for our infinitesimal small element this is going to be zero that means py is going to be equal to ps and pz is going to be equal to ps so what's the conclusion of this this is really remarkable um, milestone uh sorry actually a different color let's say this color okay this is a really remarkable milestone and we could actually get as well PH is equal to PS if we do the, the other um, balance, the force balance in the X direction. So what we can tell about this is that the pressure point in a fluid uh, at rest, of course, is independent on the direction. It's going to be only dependable or it's going to depend only on the high of the, of the fluid above of it okay so that would be all about the pressure point that's what I wanted to make very clear so I'm going to write it here down okay pressure point is independent of the direction so what depends on and that's what I already said but I want to actually demonstrate um, how to know what's the pressure uh, of a field and for that I'm going to use another image So, and this image, I actually took it from the same book. I will put it on the comments or on the description, actually. So, basically, if we have this differential element within a fluid, as I did before, we can tell that uh, the force over uh, the phases, okay, the, this phase and this phase, for instance, for y, so we can tell, okay, let's do the, the differential force in the y direction is going to be equal to at the very bar, at the very center we have pressure. Okay, this is pressure. So we are going to tell that um, the pressure coming from here, okay, or the pressure at this uh, phase not coming from this, but at this phase it's going to be pressure minus the differential pressure, right? And this pressure can, I mean, it's going to change based on how much you go to center, right? So it's going to be dependent on y, right? And as you can see, this is just at the middle, so it's going to be actually half y. So, y over 2, we know that this force, right, and force needs to be multiplied, I mean pressure needs to be multiplied by uh, the area, and what's this area? It's going to be x, right, this, times z, so x times z, right, minus, in the other direction, right, we have this vector, going this way remember this is force is a vector if we were talking about pressure pressure is not a vector it's a scalar but force is a vector that's why um we are doing balance of vectors i mean of forces which are vectors so pressure plus 
Um, same. Y the uh, Y over two, and then again the S the Z, right? So after we can sell terms out, so we are going to end up with. Okay, let's just uh, give some. So what I was saying here is that um, let's remove this. Um, the Z. Okay, this is what we end up with. Okay, so if we do so in every single phase, we are going to end up with the um, surface force. Okay, so the differential surface force. So doing everything in every phase is going to be differential element of surface force. I mean in the y in the edge direction, which is going to be um, i plus the f uh, z. Um, this is j plus d f z in k okay and we know that we could express uh, force as pressure times area so let's do so differential force is going to be equal to and here we will have um yeah let's say the Partial differential equations with respect to it, uh, the pressure with respect to it, I plus Y in, uh, sorry, plus same in Z. It's good if you're doing it at the same time with me. If you pause the video and you try to do it yourself. Um, Yup, good. So we have um, here, we will have, depending on, of course, what we are going to have, because we are multiplying by this volume element, but if you distribute, you will see that this cancels out with this one, and this cancels out with this one, and that's why you get uh, pressure times differential uh, times area, let's say. Okay? So, the resultant, the resultant force acting on a small fluid element depends only on the pressure gradient if there are no shear and stress present. Pay attention here that we don't have any shear stress, okay? Just pressure, which is normal stress. Okay. And what is this here? You need to remember your calculus. Um, uh, so what we need to remember here as well is that we need a negative element here. And... <laughs> Um yeah that's that's basically because we got this negative element from here if you remember clearly you see okay so what is this here that's what i want to say before talking about the sign i want to talk about what is this this is nothing else than the gradient of pressure right and remember that gradient, this element here, del, is for scalar elements. If you are talking about something like, uh, let's say, this, this is not gradient anymore. This is divergence, which is, uh, let's say, same concept, but for vectors. Just leave it that way for now, okay? If you want to go deeper into it, you could uh, read uh, a book, a book about um, calculus or something that, but just leave it like that. Gradient is going to be for scalar elements and it's going to give us a vector as a result. Uh, divergence is going to be um, for vector elements and it's going to be uh, give us a uh, scalar element as a result. But anyway, we have these here. Um, yeah, so basically. If we um, have this here, it's going to be equal to the differential force, right? Uh, we have this negative here, the force, the x, the y, the z. And then we can tell that the pressure, I mean, if we um, solve for this, 
but anyway let's say this is not really important what I want to focus now is on this element okay if we do a uh, summation of forces okay we are going to have uh, the summation of forces total forces I'm talking about we're going to have the surface force right minus what else is here of course the weight right and what is weight weight we said that is mass times gravity times the differential element right uh, of volume and we know that mass times gravity is going to be a specific weight times the differential element um, which is nothing than uh, the x dy dz right and this is going to be equal to mass times acceleration I mean uh, mass the uh, differential element of mass of course because it's uh, this and then we can as well tell that this differential element of mass uh, let's say real quick this uh, sorry about this is going to be equal to density again um, and differential element of volume again the y uh, this set okay times acceleration and we end up this is gone uh, this is very easy, simple to consult out elements and we end up with do you remember this that I said is not very important well let's come here and you see that it's going to be exactly what we get here this and this is going to be of course in the k direction rho times acceleration this is what we get here and this equation is going to be the general equation for what I was talking at the very beginning of the video that it was equation for pressure field this is the this is the one we, we wanted to get and then um, let's say if we have a fluid at rest what's going to be this acceleration is just zero right and if a fluid is at rest we get that the um, pressure okay negative um, specific weight okay, in the k direction is going to be equal to zero and then if this is equal to zero we know what the, this is that is the pressure over at in I plus the pressure Y in J plus the pressure over Z in K and this needs to be equal to if we uh, move it to the other side right let's move this to the other side let's keep this here negative minus specific way K of course there is nothing to equal to it so we can tell okay there is no zero zero i here so this is going to be zero same for y zero uh, sorry j and for k we can equal them and this is going to be like magic we have differential element of p let's say it's going to what is this minus density gravity and right if we integrate from zero to p and from um so we are going uh from let's say zero to down right to z to minus z actually so from zero to minus z we are going to end up that the pressure at some point is going to be this is not zero actually p zero so it's going to be p minus p zero so let's move it to the other side okay i'm going too fast i believe p zero um here let's just erase this a little bit okay and we are going to have p minus p zero is going to be equal to um rho g z right and p equal to rho g z 
plus p0 we know this equation right and it came from all of this analysis we just did from a differential element this is so beautiful to get because I was using this equation for many years you know and um, studying this subject is that I understood how we get to this equation that it's the equation we use for doing the analysis for manometers for instance so that's everything I want to share with you in this video. I hope you enjoy. And yeah, it's very nice to have you here.